This is a podcast from Minute Media. Hello, and welcome to the Over and Back Classic NBA Podcast. I am Jason, and with me as usual, Rich. Hello, Rich. Hello. So, NBA wrote out its its seventy uh, fifth anniversary team because, as we know, NBA. It was founded as a merger between two leagues, the BAA and the NBL. That occurred in 1949 for the 1950 season, and that was 75 years ago. Yep. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I, I was told there'd be no math, so yes, I am going right. to. You said it very confidently, so Jason, I agree. That is right. indeed 75 years ago. 1950 is okay. indeed 75 years away from 2021. Yeah. I think. Yeah, it was, Wait a whatever. minute. Yeah. Wait right. a minute. Hold on. All right. All right, let's not question that. All right. Oh, um, God. <laughs> yeah, it is a little confusing. But yeah, so yes, NBA announced its what it's called in its 75th anniversary team, um, picked, well, 76 uh, players in the 75 <laughs> first list. I mean, there was a tie. I mean, why, you know. It's fine. It's just it. so, it's, it's you know? oh my God. It's just, yeah. it's the perfect cherry on top of this. What I, I think has been a semi a, a weird rollout that we're going to talk about here in a bit, but just the the cherry on top, the the chef's kiss to it is, yeah, seventy six. I don't care. Seventy six. Might as well, you know. Right. Don't ask the guys well. to break a tie. Just go. Nah, seventy six. That's fine. Yeah, so, <laughs> it's, it's, but that's a lot of math too. Well, yeah. here, here's the thing that's that's going to be interesting right. about this moving forward is so. Sure. Okay, if we use the precedent that the fifty team, because all the fifty guys were back on, right for the seventy five team. Sure. Presuming that all new the seventy six, we're we're one down like every single time now. The hundredth right. team is going to get one less guy, <laughs> or are they going to get sure. one additional guy? They're going to have one hundred and one players on the hundred team, uh, or one hundred and two. Uh, yeah, There's what? There are no rules anymore. There's there anarchy. Are, it's just pure anarchy. Like no rules. Yeah, and I, it's and I'm I like mean, ECW. Anarchy does not rule here. All right, it does, so, not, it does not, not rule with a Z. Does, all right, does not rule with a Z and no E. <laughs> right. That, that's that. leave that for extreme championship wrestling. This is the right. National Basketball Association, man. Right. The national There's rules. Basketball. I'd be interested in the, the national... You can't just say it's 75th anniversary if it's not your 75th anniversary. We'd have rules, yeah. Jason. We have things we, that we have we to follow have, here. We do have rules. You know, I would be interested in extreme uh, basketball association, what that would be like, you know? The yeah, EPA. a lot of, yeah. 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 Big Sally of, Graziano, of you know, yeah, town right. low. Just, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Little guidos on his shoulders. It's like, well, sure. hey, it's legal. Right. Are there going to be three-way dances? You know, is there going to be... Uh, oh, certainly, you yeah. Know, They'll be dancing on the uh, you know the roof of the ECW arena. You know, I is it's it's hard to know what's going to happen. But anyway, um, we digress. As we, <laughs> did uh, we? <laughs> we might have. It's possible. Um, yeah. So the NBA announced its uh, its NBA seventy five team, and uh, yeah, it was um, I don't know, not exactly the most uh, dramatic um, way of it was basically it was announced on Twitter. So. Uh, um, yeah, it, yeah. it was strange. Yeah. So the one day, the first day they did it on like the first TNT game or whatever. And that was fi- like that. I didn't mind. Cause what it was, it was on like national TV. It was the opening right. day. Like sure. there were some guys that were there. So it was an opportunity yeah. to tell, you know, certain people, Hey, you made the NBA 75 or whatever. And that was cool. Yeah. And right. then the next day they did it on ESPN at like 3 PM <laughs> Eastern. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, yeah. and they did, it was where they did the weird groupings or they're like Celtics legends, Bill Walton, Sam Jones. <laughs> I'm like, what's <laughs> right. going on? Right. Like, like, right. And like you said, you everybody found out about it on Twitter, and I just, sure. I just think there probably was a better way to go about it. But I, yeah. I, I don't know that right. I can tell you definitively what that better way was. I mean, it it, it lacked drama, I guess. Um, it lacked a sense of you know panache. Um, it you know it lacked, no pageantry, I guess. I would have liked to have seen a little bit more pageantry. Yeah, just something like I don't know if you do it during halftime of certain get like you know a home game for the Bulls and you do every bowl you know. All right, it's you know a national TV game, and it's the I, I don't know. I, there's some way to do it. There's some halftime way to do it. There's something to do right. that would definitely be better than this. And hey, there's people paid probably a lot more money than me <laughs> who have the opportunity to think about these things, sure. and instead they decided just on three days just kind of throw out a bunch of names on Twitter and then a bunch of names on on ESPN and TNT, and then just kind of get it over with as quickly as possible. So right, and I guess yeah, rolling it out like three separate days was I guess interesting. You know, because you get again twenty five or twenty six each names, and I, yeah, I guess it fed a little bit of speculation about oh who's left or whatever but i i don't know it just um it, it felt like a little gimmicky i guess um 
I don't know. It didn't. Uh, I, I'm I'm being you know a uh, trademark old person here, but a, a curmudgeon perhaps. About yeah. It. Oh yeah. It just felt. Yeah. It no didn't problem. Feel. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I appreciate your uh, understanding <laughs> about that. You know. No, but I really think uh, you, you know. To me, there there is still the opportunity. It does, they do still have the opportunity of the All Star Weekend to at least try to make because. For NBA 50, for all we we've talked a lot about NBA 50. We've done episodes sure. about it. Yeah. We've watched the NBA 50 ceremony during the. Uh, yeah. We did that for a live stream with the uh, with the one Doctor Curtis Harris watching the 1997 right. yeah. uh, All Star game. I, I forget if Rainus was with us for that one too. I think, I think he was, was there too. I yeah. think he was yeah. as well. So we watched the 97 All Star game and and went and watched the NBA 50 rollout. And you know it was a really cool moment. Everybody had their jackets. Everybody was there. It was just a really really cool thing. A lot of people probably don't know that the team was just announced by David Stern in like a hotel lobby or something. You know, it, like it had no, like we didn't care. It, like, and it just wasn't that big of a deal when it got announced. But then sure. it was all about that moment when they all got out there and when it was like, oh, wow, here's like every great, you know, mo- here's this list, this greatest of the great NBA players. And they're all standing here. They're all here in this moment at right. this time. And I think, you know, having something this All Star weekend and, and, and making it that big of a deal and making it this giant thing is a way to recover this. And we will never think about, hey, you remember when they rolled it out on Twitter or whatever? Like, I don't think we'll care about that if the All-Star game delivers and if they do the same sort of thing. And, I mean, I I, I hope they would. I, I don't know. Do we even know that that's what they're going to do? But, I mean, I, that seemed like such an easy win to just have those guys come out, announce their names. I don't know if you have to have a, 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 a tacky jacket. I mean, I like the tacky right. jacket. Well, I am yeah, fine with the tacky know, jacket. Sure. But um, however they want to do it, I mean, I think, I think that's the easy win to make people forget that maybe this rollout wasn't maybe the best or the most had the most pageantry is like give it as much pageantry as humanly possible on the All Star Weekend, and that I think most people will probably forgive them if so. Yeah, I, I would um, agree with that. Yeah, and obviously, you know, COVID being the only uh, sure, uh, you know of course. wrench there, of course, you know if, if that uh, if, if that's not able to um, happen, but yeah, it would be great to have something um exit with, with some pageantry and you're right yeah the way that it was introduced in um 96 uh was it wasn't exactly dramatic either so but they they got there and they could get there with this as well so which would uh render my complaining move which i would be glad to have happen so we'll see so as you um as you referenced there were previous anniversary teams uh, of course the 50th which we, we've talked about a lot but there was also a 20th a 25th anniversary team and a 35th anniversary team so uh the 25th anniversary team happened in the 1971 season. Uh, there were 10 players selected out of 25 nominees chosen by an expert panel. So this was a, you know, as a panel, it was like, it was like Red Arbach, It was Ned Irish. It was a bunch of, um, you know, executives and writers and people who had been around the game for a long time. So it was a well-selected list. And then out of those 25 10 players were selected. Anyone who had ever been on an all NBA first team was allowed to vote. So which is kind of interesting. It did not include anyone active. So, you know, Will Chamberlain, Jerry West, Elgin Baylor, Oscar Robertson, all not eligible because they were still active. Uh, And it was done like an all NBA team. So there were four forwards, four guards, two centers. Uh, The players selected were Bob Pettit, Dolph Shays, Paul Arizon, and Joe Folks. You might find Joe Folk's interesting name here, which we'll get into in just a second. And then at center, uh, those were the forwards, by the way. At center, Bill Russell, George Mikan. And then at guard, Bob Cousy, Bill Sharman, Bob Davies, another name you might uh, be a little bit surprised to hear. And Sam Jones, Coach Red Arbeck, also selected, obviously, as the coach. So um, we've done a show on this, uh, which you could get into um, if you wanted to get more deeply, including the you know the 25 nominees. But I, I think this was a list that was you know out, outside of not including the active players um i think was you know pretty reflective of the first oh for sure yeah i think this time. is this is probably what one of the more clean lists we'll have here of just like perfectly represents that first 25 years quote unquote 25 years uh, of the nba uh inclu- obviously without if you don't include the active guys chamberlain west baylor and, and robertson all right. would be no doubters on there but uh, right. other than that yeah it, it pretty much nails it i i think it's pretty clean and and really i have no uh, huge issues with it. Maybe there's some a few little guys you could say here and there, but but given that it was going to be you know done in, in like the All NBA team, I think they did a pretty damn good job. So no no real complaints about the 25. Yeah, there you go. So the 35th, 10 years later, of course, this one was voted on by the Professional Basketball Writers Association of America. It did include active players, and there was no consideration for position. So um, the uh, the players who were selected: Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Elgin Baylor, Will Chamberlain, Bob Cousy, Julius Irving, interesting name, we'll uh, get into in a second, John Havlicek, George Mikan, 
Bob Pettit, Oscar Robertson, Bill Russell, Jerry West. Also, Red Auerbach was selected again as the coach. The 1966-67 Philadelphia 76ers were, were selected as the greatest individual team. And Bill Russell was selected as the greatest player. So 1981 consensus, at least from the Professional Basketball Writers Association of America, Bill Russell had been the greatest player uh, in uh, NBA history so far. Yeah, so. there we go. And I don't think they've ever declared a new one. So I think Bill Russell, yeah. by, uh, by virtue, is still the GOAT. So good. So, All those debates good. are done. We don't have to do them anymore. Great. Over. All right. Hey. <laughs> Over. Yes. So... Interesting thing about about uh, Doc, of course, you know he'd only been in the NBA for you know four or five seasons at this point. So yeah, um, now you, you know I, I don't know officially if his ABA um, you know, accolades were were considered. So that would obviously have extended his career. But you know he's I mean obviously Julie Serving was awesome. You know you can't really argue his inclusion on the list. But in terms of longevity, obviously you know the rest of these guys had either completed their career, or in the case of Kareem Abdul Jabbar, had been you know like a uh, you know, five-time MVP at this point, you know, clearly one of the greatest players of all time. Yeah, it's 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 a little ballsy, and we haven't even had, I mean, Julius Irving by, you know, 1981, he hasn't even won the, you know, won the title with Philadelphia, that, that thing that would kind of sure. stamp his, his legacy even more, so right, it right. was definitely very similar to the Shaq in, in, in 97, very much like, a, hey, this guy has been awesome so far, and he's probably still going to be awesome, let's hope, let's see, and, yeah. and they were right, they were right about Julius, he remained awesome, and, and obviously they were right in 1997 about Shaq, but yeah, it, it definitely takes on a very different thing if, you know, Julius Irving, you know, blows his knee out in, in 1982 or whatever, never plays again, it's like, I don't know, that's like a yeah. weird, a weird guy on this list, but uh, it ends up being alright, so, when it's all said sure. and done. Sure. And then the the 50th, you know, we're not going to get too into that, we've already talked about it here, and of course we touched on it, uh, many uh, previous uh, episodes, including our own stab at the uh, the 50 greatest NBA players that we did in 2015. Can you believe we did that six years I ago? I know. God, that seems it, – it really doesn't seem that long ago. I mean, <laughs> time is it, – it, it's right. nuts. I cannot believe. When I was looking back, you know, somebody was like, oh, I can't believe you guys didn't have, you know, like, you know Steph Curry in it. And I'm like, yeah, why didn't we have Steph Curry? And I'm like, oh, wait, it was 2015. <laughs> like, how much has happened since like, – yeah. like, at that time, we're like, oh, this Steph Curry guy, it's pretty fun what he's doing, but I don't know. <laughs> like, we'll see. And it's like, we'll see. Uh... <laughs> those Warriors, uh, Draymond Green at center, that's going to be a little weird. How is he going to guard, you know, Dwight Howard? It's like, oh, right, he's, they're going to totally change the NBA and completely transform it over the next uh, seven years. But, yeah, a lot of t- things change very, very, very much uh, in, in that amount of time. So uh, very, very fun uh, to look back. Yeah, I cannot believe it was 2015. That's That's wild. Yeah. Absolutely. So um, there are a total of four players who have been on the NBA 25, the NBA 35, the NBA 50, and the NBA 75. They are Bill Russell, Bob Cousy, Bob Pettit, and George Mikan. So uh, uh, quite a good list there. Um, Bill Sharman, Paul Arizin, Sam Jones, Dolph Shays, they were on NBA 25, NBA 50 and NBA 75, but not NBA 35. Um, Bob Davies and Joe folks, the only two to be on the NBA 25th anniversary, then no other teams and everyone from the NBA 35 made NBA 50 and NBA 75. Yeah. And I think that's, that's the, the big note there. The, the, the last note that n- nobody was really quite sure there was weird mixed messages about this as well uh, of, you know, whether the, the entire NBA 50 team would be carried over to the NBA 75 team, whether that was official, unofficial, whether all the voters decided, hey, let's keep everybody in there and then vote for the new guys, or the NBA right. said, no, you can't, you know, these 50 are going to stay. Uh, but that, I think, is an important note there that we don't have to look at, okay, well, hey, uh, sorry, Dave Bing, you're out, buddy, like, hit the bricks. Right. Uh, that, you know, instead we're going to have, uh, you know, all the 50 stay into the 75, which I, I have a little bit of a mixed feelings on. I don't know where you're at with this. Like, in one breath, I don't really want to tell, you know, Dave Bing that, hey, sorry, man. Uh, you, yeah. you got to get lost, but I think it, it's not impossible that somebody that was, you know, in the top 50 in, in, in 1997 is not still in the, you know, the top 75 all those many years later. Like, I don't think it's impossible to say that, but I get why, you know, the, 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 the optics of, you know, three or four guys getting sent away, you know, while a bunch of new, you know, you know I, 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 get right. it. I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. But it's, it's in one breath. I do think it maybe makes this list a little. I, I don't know. There, there's something weird I have about it where, where I do think that there are guys who are well-deserving that are not on this list and, and, and people that were, you know, maybe deserving in 1997 or less so deserving in 1997 are still on the list because they just felt bad about taking them off. So, Right. Yeah, I would say for the voting panel, you know, for the, for the people who are making the selection here, 
uh, who are you know, you know experts about basketball, you know, among the greatest players, and you know, there's some writers and executives and people who know the NBA, but probably are not you know well versed in the early history of the NBA and being able to parse out those guys. Probably just best for them to, you know, grandfather the, the top 50 in, honor that previous decision, and then just try to get, you know, um, 25, 26 guys out of, you know, the last 25 years and, you know, call in a couple of favors for guys who missed the original cut. That's probably a better resolution, even though, you know, obviously we know different things about basketball, you know, in, you know, 20, 21 than we did in 1996. I mean, we, we can obviously analyze it differently and see player value and, you know, see guys who were overlooked and, um, you know, see guys who might've been overvalued. I think that we, um, you know, we are the collective, we of basketball experts could probably go back and make good decisions about that. But the panel that they have making those decisions, I, I think probably just best to go with the way that they went with. Yeah, and, and like I said, the optics are pretty tough because I think there's a really good chance that most of the people that were on the 50 would, would be carried over. Right. Except there there are, and there's guys that we discussed back in 2015 that were even just like, ah, those guys are right on the cusp there and like maybe we're going to kick them off. And and we obviously were a little bit easier to like, you know, we were doing it over and back 50. We're like, all right, <laughs> Maravich hit the bricks, pal. Like, you right. know, we right. had no problem doing that because we didn't have to like, you know, go out there and announce, hey, we uh, didn't put, like nobody cared, you know, that the, we had, you know, our, 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 you know, dozens of listeners at that time or whatever. And it was like, sure. yeah, all right, whatever. Like we're not an official body of the NBA. It's a lot harder, especially if like the voting comes in and it's like, oh crap, there's like Bill Walton, Pete Maravich, and Dave Bing. Like those are the only people that we aren't carrying over. Like that right. looks really crappy to those guys. That, I mean, that the optics of that are, are pretty tough. So yeah, uh, they, they're in a very interesting position here, and I think it, maybe it is just fine to to bring the fifty over. So sure, sure. So looking at the players who are new, brand new to the list of seventy five. Um, I think you and I were just gonna gonna go through it and say if we feel like they're absolutely automatic, no question on this list, or if it was something that you would have a debate for. So, okay, yeah, let's do it. All right, so Ray Allen. Uh, slight debate. I I think probably a very small debate. I think he probably belongs on there, but I at least would have him on my like short list of guys to at least look it up. Not he's not a no doubter in my mind. He's he's one yeah. that I would I'd like to look it up a little bit more. Uh, agreed. Yeah. Um, uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo. This is a future one too. It, it, well, it's it's kind of present. And it's kind of future as well. I mean, he is a two time MVP. He just wrapped up a championship. Like, there's a very, very, very strong chance that when he ends his career, he will be no doubt, unbelievably no doubt, uh, in the top seventy five. But it is it, it, it's tough just because he's so young in his career. I mean, he's twenty six years old, right? Like, he's still right. super, super young. But the accolades and what he's achieved so far uh, do put him in rare air. So. I would say probably no debate, but I, I I would I would listen to a debate if 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 that I don't want to make the debate, but if someone wanted to, I would listen to them about it. Okay, yeah, I, I would say no debate. I think he's done enough at this point. So, uh, Carmelo Anthony, uh, I think he's got to be in there. I, I think he's he's obviously gonna you know end his career in the top ten of sco- points scored. He already, he's already there now. I think he just passed. Uh, I forget who we just passed the other day. We just did an episode about but that. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, Dan, yeah, right, right. So, right. Uh, no, he, he's 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 probably there. He, I, I I really have no issue with Carmelo Anthony being in there. Okay, I, I would. I think it's a discussion, but yeah, like likely, I would say he's likely in. Uh, Kobe Bryant, I'm gonna say no doubt for for me. I'm yeah, absolutely no doubt. Absolutely yeah. no doubt. Uh, Steph Curry, uh, no doubt. <laughs> yeah, no, so, no. yeah. Um, Anthony Davis, a interesting one. I um, yeah, I, I would like to talk about Anthony Davis. That that's sure. one that for sure I think I, I would like to have a little discussion on. I don't want to say no right off the bat, but I do think that I I don't know that his uh, off the top of my head his resume doesn't strike me as as, as a guy who who isn't worthy of debate, but, but maybe if I look at the research, it'll be like, Oh yeah, clearly he is. But he's one that I definitely kind of circled when I first saw that list come out. Yeah. And he would be one of the guys who I would consider like bumping off for maybe another candidate Mm -hmm. as well. I mean, I mean, and again, like in, in five years uh, and or 10 years, that might look silly, but right now he's kind of more on the borderline, despite obviously being a great player. Uh, Tim Duncan, pretty sure. (laughs) I think, uh, I think safely Tim Duncan can remain on this list. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Kevin Durant, uh, also safe. Yep, yep. One of the greatest scorers of all time. Yeah, he's he's allowed yeah. to stay. Kevin Garnett, uh, also safe. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, James Harden. I think James Harden is safe. I I, I think in yeah. totality, what he's done over the last decade or whatever has, has definitely right. put him. Two MVPs? Is that right? Uh, yes. I think I think he had two. 
uh, one or two. I know he at least uh, he had definitely had one. Maybe it's just one. Two. Maybe it is just one now that I think about it. But uh, no, okay, only one. Twenty eighteen. So uh, six time All NBA first team. Though. So yeah, I mean that's pretty. I mean we're talking pretty. I mean his, his yeah. the black ink on on him is great in terms of just leading the league in a bunch of different stuff. MVP right. award shares. I think he's been top ten. What was it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times he's been top ten. I mean yeah, that's. Sure. Pretty good. Winning one, second twice or three times. He's second three times. Good lord! Oh, I didn't okay, even realize. Yeah, All I just right. forget that. Like 2015, he was he was already pretty damn uh, yeah. established. So yeah, sure. I think the more I you know, kind of glancing at it quickly, I think he probably is a no doubter for me. But mm-hmm. uh, if somebody wanted to make a debate, I think I would listen to it briefly. But I I, I think he's pretty safely in. All right, Allen Iverson. I feel bad. I love Allen Iverson, one of my favorite players of all time. But I think he 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 deserves a little bit of uh, of digging in. I think. Sure. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Uh, LeBron James. Uh, Man, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. He's he's good, but yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm sure there are there is somebody who would like to debate uh, him being in the NBA 75th, but that person should not be listened to and should be blocked and 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 just stoned or just thrown into the oh, ocean wow. on sight. Wow. So. Um, Strong takes here. Well, I mean, come on. There's going to be there is. Right. I bet there. I bet it would not be that hard to find someone that's like, all right, he lost the yeah, fi- he lost I, in the final six times. <laughs> okay, all right. just <laughs> I like you. I like you busting out the deep Chicago accent. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I hear it a lot. I was going to say there's yeah. there's somebody I encounter on a daily basis that probably would also agree. Like, I don't know, stop seventy five. Uh, I was like, get out of here. Yeah, uh, LeBron, yeah. Uh, no doubt. No, not. I mean, the yeah. easiest the easiest pick. I, I think of everybody sure. to get in. Um, Jason Kidd. Uh, kids in, kids in for sure. I, th- I think when you look at oh, yeah. at his, his his assist numbers and his steal numbers and everything else, now he definitely is. I think it's a little debate on kid, but I mean, obviously, all, all of these guys likely in. Um, Kawhi Leonard. Ooh, Kawhi is tough for me because I think he, I mean he's really really good, and you look at his his numbers and his career and stuff, and he's a lot better than you probably imagine him being. He doesn't feel like a no doubter for me, though. I, I want to have a debate about him because I, I really am not quite sure if he belonged on this on this list at this point in his career. But but okay. what what do you think? Yeah. I mean, two time Finals MVP, um, you know, uh, twice Defensive Player of the Year. You know, only five times All NBA. I mean, not that that's that's certainly good, but um, you know, that's not as high as some of the other guys here. Um, I, he's really close to no debate for me. I, you could talk me into a discussion about, it. I guess what you just did. So, um, so, uh, yeah, but he's, he's definitely, um, he's definitely up there for me. Uh, Damian Lillard. Uh, D- Dame's tough. Uh, one that I really, really like, but I do think that he, uh, he deserves the discussion. There, there's going to be some guys that we're going to talk about that. I think I would probably have in there over Damian Lillard, but, okay. um, he's one that, that I think is, is, is worth the discussion. Even if he ultimately does go in, uh, I, I think I'd like to talk about Damian Lillard a little bit. Yeah. Bob McAdoo, I would say, yeah, worth the discussion. Uh, yeah, Bob McAdoo, worth the discussion. I, I don't mind it. Like, you know, he's definitely yeah. a guy that, that was off that, you know, NBA 50 that's now on the NBA 75, and, and I don't disagree with it. But I think he still deserves a little bit of discussion. And it's a thing, it's a conversation that we've had a lot of times about his career. It's a very sure. strange, weird career where, like, he was on the trajectory of being an all-time great, and then it just kind of very, very quickly – falls off for, for, you know, reasons of, of his own and reasons of not, uh, you know, <laughs> reasons that weren't under his control whatsoever, but he, he definitely is worth a, a, a bit of a discussion on that. Sure. Absolutely. Reggie Miller. Uh, I think Reggie's probably there, but I, I would, I, I could maybe, I can maybe have a quick discussion. Yeah, about Reggie. I think, I think he were, he's merits um, a discussion for that. Not necessarily an automatic, but, um, but uh, yeah, I would, I would put him on there. I would, uh, he, we considered him for our top 50, but he ultimately did not make it. But he was definitely one of the borderline cases there. So, uh, Steve Nash. Uh, I think Nash is in. I think two-time okay. MVP, uh, uh, a lot of the other stuff you look at, I, I, I think he's in for sure. Yeah, um, I would say maybe a slight discussion. He, he's really close to being no bringer. I, I, I consider him kind of close to Kid, even though he obviously had the MVPs. Um, but I, I, the only negative on Nash is he was so – he was you know not really – He's a pretty rushing defensive player, so that's probably the only only reason why I would c- consider it. But um, obviously, I mean, great black lates, and yeah, it's it's hard to say a two time MVP wouldn't be in automatically. So um, I'm kind of back and forth there. Uh, Dirk, uh, Dirk's a no doubter for me. Okay. I mean, just, yeah, just agree, clearly, yeah, clearly yeah, yeah. in. So. A- absolutely, yes. I, I, and a personal favor for your, for you, of course. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm very biased that he has to go in, but like, yeah, I don't think he gets enough credit or enough do. I mean, if you really look at his numbers and his overall rankings and stuff, you're, you'd be blown away about how right. he's there in like every one of the like a lot of the big, big major sure. categories. He's right there. Sure. Yeah, Chris Paul. Oh, no doubter. Yeah, best yeah. one of the best point guards of all time. No doubter. 
Agreed. Uh, Gary Payton. Uh, Gary Payton, I think, is in. I, I, I think you look at his, his entire career, the defensive end, the, the the superstardom and all that sort of stuff that he had as well in the 90s. I, I think Gary Payton's pretty solidly in. Yeah, discussion, I think. I, I would have a discussion on Payton, but um, be pretty be a very short one. Uh, Paul Pierce, our favorite player. Yeah, <laughs> not the biggest Paul Pierce fan, but right. I think he probably belongs. I mean, looking at his numbers, I think, like, you know, if you wanted to have a debate about him, I, I, I would definitely uh, discuss it with you, but I, I think he's probably pretty solidly in. Sure. Dennis Rodman. Uh, Rodman, I think, is in. Uh, yeah. yeah, we. we I he think. Are, yeah, he may have top fifty. I, w- I would think there might be a debate there, but yeah, um, I mean, for yeah. me, it's not going to be. I mean, again, biased a little bit, but uh, right. no, I think sure. when 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 you talk about what's important in the NBA and all that sort of stuff, you do have to kind of take all parts and all facets of the game. And there was nobody better at at at, a, at two certain pr- at facets of the game uh, right. than Dennis Robin was for a very very long amount of time. So I think he's sure. pretty solidly in there. Yeah, Dwayne Wade. Uh, Wade's in there, no doubt. Yeah, Good. Russell Westbrook. Uh, I think Westbrook's probably in, but I, I would definitely listen to a debate. Okay. Yeah, he's really close to that border of no debate, but I, you know, I'm willing to listen to one, I suppose. But I don't know, four straight seasons of triple doubles, that's pretty good. It's pretty damn good, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. no matter MVP, how he does you know, yeah. maybe the last two have been you know, a little right. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a little forced, but yeah, no, no, for sure. Yeah. And uh, Dominique Wilkins. Yeah, I'm fine with Dominique being in there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he should be in. I, I'm not a, a no debate guy, but definitely, I I'm happy he's in. Yeah, and he, as you mentioned, you know, Bob McAdoo, Dominique Wilkins, you know, didn't make the NBA 50 list. Uh, the only two guys who you know whose careers were complete, who were eligible for NBA 50, didn't make it, but made NBA 75. Reggie Miller was technically eligible, but hadn't really done enough in his career yet in 1996. So those are the three you know historic guys. But, you know, quote unquote historic guys who made the 75 didn't make the 50 everyone else was you know pretty much a post 1996 player so interesting stuff so yeah um, i think we now are want to talk about the biggest snubs yeah let's get snubby here uh, all right Ooh, <laughs> is that a word i don't know snubby. if that's a word but it is I, now. I like it i like it yeah. yeah i don't do i i don't know if i like it actually you know, i all said right. it and i kind of felt gross let's, so let's uh snubby. you can decide right. if you want to keep using snubby if you want but snubby. Uh, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah you know like i'm that. back in i'm back in snubby is all right, actually good cool. so all right nice <laughs> let's all right. do it awesome all right you want, you want to start with Pau Gasol? Yeah, let's talk about Pau Gasol. So he's one of the two players who made our uh, over and back 50 back in 2015, but not on the NBA 75. And that was one of the episodes that, that people still bring up to this day. Because when we right. people that weren't around, around this time, we, we basically got a big list of guys and guys we thought deserved to be on there, guys that we thought were maybe on the cusp, guys or whatever, and just did episodes about every single one of these guys. I mean, I, I don't even remember how many it was that we did in the NBA 50 series. It was probably 20 or whatever that we did. But, oh, yeah, more than that, yeah. I mean, it, yeah, it was a long time that we were doing right. it. It was fun. Sure. It was, it's it's yeah. you know our, one of our charter series that we've ever done here on this show. But uh, yeah. Paul Gasol was one that I think you and I both were just like people. And this was in 2015, and he, he like yeah. added to this since then, where well, we're like, people yeah. just don't get it with this guy. I mean, it, it's... It's so hard to believe how good he is and how little credit he gets for that. So he is, he has the highest win shares of anybody not on the NBA 75 list. 144.1 win shares career for Pau Gasol. So that's higher than anybody that's not on that NBA 75 list. And it's more win shares than 49 of the guys on the list as well. So <laughs> the majority of the people on the list, Pau Gasol has more win shares than. Uh, his accolades, Rookie of the Year, six-time All-Star, two NBA titles, two-time All-NBA second team, two-time All-NBA third team, all-time ranks, he ranks 44th in points scored, 29th in rebounds, 40th in games played, 50th in PER, 31st in win shares, 66th in win shares per 48. 45th in box plus minus and 29th in value over replacement player. Now the cons on Paul Gasol, and then I'll kind of let you give your thoughts on this. Uh, he never had an all NBA first team nod, which, you know, that I get it. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Never led the team, never led the league in any st- uh, statistical category. No black ink on his uh, basketball reference whatsoever. He just doesn't lead anything in anything. Right. Never received an MVP vote either. Never finished anywhere in, in the running for MVP. Uh, whatsoever played most of his prime in relative obscurity in Memphis. And then his, you know, the last half of his prime largely in Kobe Bryant's shadow. Yes. He was an important part of that team. Yes. In one of those teams, he was arguably better than Kobe Bryant played a bigger role in them, maybe winning the title than Kobe did, but like no one's going to give Paul Gasol that kind of credit. Cause it's, it's, it's always going to be Kobe's team. The Lakers were always going to be Kobe's thing. And, and, and Gasol was the guy who came in as reinforcement to kind of help Kobe get over the, the hump or help the Lakers get over the hump. So he's never going to get full credit for that. And, and, and maybe rightfully so, you know, it, it was at the end of the day, Kobe, you know, kind of ran the show 
uh, uh, there for, for, for better or for worse, and obviously for better because they were pretty successful and won a few titles. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, yeah, so that, that I, that's really it with, with Gasol. So Gasol's a very interesting case on, in that the numbers really bear it out. The longevity numbers, the efficiency numbers, they bear it out. But he never, you know, the accolades aren't quite there, and I don't know if that's a chicken or egg thing because we, you know, we're saying right now that, like, he never got his due. He never really got his credit. So, you know, using, you know, the lack of MVP votes, using the lack of all NBA first teams, it's tough because it's kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you say, Hey, here's a guy that was completely, you know, totally underrated in his prime. And now here he is, you know, he does nobody named him for this. Nobody named him for that. He didn't win this award. Well, they kind of go hand in hand. You know what I mean? Like he probably should have gotten an all NBA first team. He probably should have, you know, gotten some MVP votes and he just never right. did for one reason or another. Um, so he's a, he's a tough case, but I think he's an absolute no doubter that has to be in the 75. Okay. Um, well, I, I, I think part of that, too, in terms of the overlook during this time and the lack of, you know, uh, maybe all NBA appearances is that, you know, he's also basically has a you know, parallel career with you know, somebody like Kevin Garnett, somebody like Tim Duncan, um, somebody like Dirk Nowitzki, um, you know, a, a lot of, you know, of course, you know, um, generation defining, you know, big men. Um, that are playing you know, during his time. And he wasn't as good as those guys, but you know, he, he was really, really good. And if he's playing, you know, in a, a slightly different area, that might get more appreciated. Um, yeah, I, I would, yeah, I'd put him on the 75. Uh, I, if I recall, he was the last or maybe the second to last, the player that we decided for um, our over and back 50 list. Um, you know, he's, again he's excellent but i i do you know it is hard to find exactly like i don't necessarily think i would put him over any of the you know the the new guys that they added on the team so it would be a matter of you know which old guy you you know which guy who made the the top 50 would i have him go over and there's you know a handful of guys i could see him going over but that is obviously a more difficult decision than okay do i include him among the top 25 guys because or you know the the new 25 or so guys and i'm like well that's probably not realistic you know in terms of am i gonna is there anybody who he's you know head and shoulders above on that of the new 25 guys right yeah if we were doing a whole new list i think he he he's very cleanly gets in there Sure. Um, if you are doing, okay, now you have the, the, the new 25 or whatever, you know, who does he go in instead of, I, I, I think I probably could make a case of him going in, in, in front of like, a uh, like going in front of maybe a Kawhi Leonard, maybe a Damian Lillard, uh, maybe an Anthony Davis, those sort of guys, but, but it, it's tough. It, it, he's, I think he belongs. I, I think he does, but I think they're sure. probably, it's a little more, it's a little more difficult to put him in because I think he's pretty neck and neck with a lot of those guys, like you said. In that sure. bottom half of the new twenty-five, so sure, yeah. Uh, then next, the other player who made our over and back fifty, but not the NBA seventy-five, Artis Gilmore. So you know, we made our list. We included ABA accomplishments, which you absolutely should, but they didn't do that, and so you know, I, I I'm not going to fault them for that. That was the the rules the NBA set. So does he have a case if you count only NBA accomplishments? Well, he had five all ABA first team appearances, but never made an all NBA team. Of course, there were only, you know, first and second team back then. There was no third team for basically his entire career. Um, he was a six time all-star in the NBA, one time all defensive team and second team. Uh, he is second all time in true shooting percentage. He led the league five times and was in the top five, 10 times. So that was, uh, you know, his scale obviously was a great rebounder, you know, great block, block shots, you know, really good defender, all that stuff. Um, if you look at his other all-time ranks, this is just NBA only. 50th all-time rebounds per game, 26th in blocks per game, 74th in PER, 67th in win shares, 56th in winters for 48, 84th in box score plus minus, 78th in value over placement player. Those last two stats are, of course, post-1974 accomplishments. Um, so, I mean, those, that's pretty good. That's maybe a little better in a couple of those things than I than I would have expected, but Given the criteria, probably not meriting inclusion, especially not a great deal of team success, you know, in the NBA. What do you think? Yeah, he's he's a tough one. Like I, I think when we did our over and back fifty, we we wanted to you know to weigh the ABA accomplishments and and, and weigh that a little bit. And when you do that, artist is 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 you know a very very good candidate for this. If you don't do that, if you only count the NBA accomplishments as as the NBA did here. His case isn't bad. It's better than you might think, but I I don't know if it's one that I would make as strongly. Um, if, if we're talking just NBA and, and like you said, not, not as much team accolades aren't really quite there. 
uh, probably doesn't meet the the criteria for inclusion and some of the other uh, you know numbers. But you know there are some pretty good stuff there. I mean, it, it's a better case than you might think. But I ultimately I would probably have him on the outside looking out uh, looking in. Sure. Yeah, I would agree. All right, let's get to this one here, who I think right. very well may be the biggest snub uh, of the right. entire thing, uh, Dwight Howard. So uh, he was not on our Overmack 50. Um, he probably should have been, maybe. Right. Like I'm not sure why we didn't put him in the Well, I think for the same reason honest. that probably the NBA guys didn't, which we'll get to in a minute, his, his biggest con of all. Uh, right. So like us all, he has more win shares than most of the list, 46 to be exact. Uh, three-time Defensive Player of the Year, eight-time All-Star, four-time All-NBA Defensive Team, five-time All-NBA First Team, four top ten finishes, and six times Rebound Champion. I mean, what are we doing here? <laughs> what is this? So everybody else with at least five All-NBA First Team finishes made this list, and he has more All-NBA appearances overall than James Harden, Steph Curry, Jason Kidd, Scottie Pippen, Patrick Ewing, Allen Iverson, Steve Nash, and Kawhi Leonard, among many others as well. All-time ranks, 12th in all-time rebounds, 19th in rebounds per game, 10th in career offensive rebounds, 6th in all-time defensive rebounds, 15th all-time in blocks, leading the league twice, 29th in blocks per game, led the league in field goal percentage in 2010, 7th all-time in an effective field goal percentage, 26th all-time in true shooting, 53rd in PER, 35th in win shares, 58th in win shares per 48, and 64th in value over replacement players. So, okay. Cons, he's a massive dickhead that nobody likes. So, <laughs> right there's that, yeah. and I that I there it go. So that I mean, and right. the other and, and all joking aside, the other part of his 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 quote unquote con is that you know the the, the spectacular part of his career was pretty short. I mean, in, in totality, it's probably five or six years that you're talking here. You know, maybe seven years tops. And now he's kind of hung around for a while. Like if he retires in in 2016, and we don't have Charlotte Hornets, you know, Dwight Howard, we don't have what? Atlanta Hawks, Dwight Howard. It might be a lot oh, easier to wow. say like, "Wow, look at this guy's all time great career." He's just kind of been a dude, and like not that good of a dude, and kind of an annoying dude, and 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 and, and, right. and you know, yeah, was that one you know the Lakers year in 2020 when he kind of resurrected himself and kind of figured out his role? I mean that you know that's and he's kind of been fine like the last few years. He's kind of figured out his role and he's a good bench guy and all that sort of stuff, but. It's just yeah, the 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 time when he was like one of the best players in the league feels so long ago that I think that it leads to a lot of people just kind of being like, ah, I don't know, was he really that good? And it's like, no, he was. He was so incredible. He was so so good. But um, yeah, I don't know. He he's a, to me, he's a no doubter. He's an absolute no doubter. Um, I'm more or less just wondering why the hell we didn't include him in our top fifty. Uh, yeah, and I think I want to go back and listen to that episode to see what the hell our reason is for uh, or why we didn't put him in, but. Right. Well, I, I think at the time we probably thought, okay, I mean, he was only 29 at the time and we kind of thought, you know, and he, he was still in Houston and was still at least kind of on the edge of having been, you know, um, of still, you know, there was a thought that, okay, yeah, he's still going to be a great player. He's going to add to his resume. I mean, we, we kind of thought about that as like, okay, well, we're going to give him some more time and revisit there. there. And he hasn't, you know, I mean, he's put up some numbers here and there, but obviously um, has not been the same player um, since then. And especially in the last, you know, four or five years has settled really into just being like kind of a, you know, kind of a solid dude on, you know, a backup big on, on some teams, you know, who um, annoys people. So, including his own teammates. So, um, <laughs> including everybody. <laughs> right. So, yeah, I, no, I, that, that, that's an interesting rework. But, yeah, I, I you know, looking back on it, yeah, definitely deserves to be on this team. And there's several players, you know, that I would put him, um, uh, you know, ahead of at least right now um, in terms, you know, of the, of the new guys right there. He, he definitely uh, bears inclusion, no question. Yeah, so uh, that's Dwight Howard. Yeah, to me, he's the big. I mean, I, there's people bringing up like weird, like you know, we'll talk about you know Clay Thompson and these other guys, and I'm just like, everybody yeah. should be talking about Dwight Howard. Like, there's just right. no reason for Dwight not to be in there, other than like, yeah. I think everybody had to think about it, and they're like, ah, fuck, if we invite him, are we gonna have to like hang out with him? All Star right. Weekend? Yeah. They're like, eh, yeah. and they like scratch him off the list, and eh, Damian right. Lillard. <laughs> I'd rather, sure, I'd rather yeah. hang out with Dave. Is, than, is, uh, is than he Dwight. gonna fart out of Willis Reed? I mean, <laughs> right. really yeah, just, is he gonna? Is he gonna try you know. to teabag? You know. <laughs> Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Exactly. Right. Is he going to try to see back how Greer? I mean, come right. on. Anyways, like, do know, we want that? And we can't allow that. The yeah. universal answer was no. So I, I, I'd imagine right. like a, a group chat went and been like, "Hey guys, just remember, like whoever comes, we're going to have to like hang out with right. them." And they're like, "Oh yeah, all right, cool, yeah, okay, yeah." yeah that's that's, not uh, to, just, that's just, not just to know, like we right. might be in a banquet hall with this man later sometime in this year. So just keep that in right. mind. Oh shoot! <laughs> I, I know who you vote for. So I forgot that how Greer passed away. So uh, oh shoot! So, so. Sorry. So that would be really bad so that you yeah, tough yeah tough one there yeah but, uh, right yeah exactly yeah 
Yeah, we're re- actually it's kind of an interesting thing because you know in the NBA fifty eight wasn't it? It was everybody but it was, it was forty eight. It was everyone except for Maravich who had passed away, and right. then Jerry West who was had surgery or something or just right. didn't want to be okay. there. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. But, this yeah, one, whatever the reason. Yeah, I don't want to do like the morbid. Hey, let's figure out who died right. in the seventy five <laughs> list or whatever. Yeah, but um, yeah, it it, it I think. Still, surprisingly, a lot of guys will be fine. You know what I mean? Like, which is cool. Like that. That's that's one thing that is always awesome about the NBA. Yeah, is that like most of the? I mean, I think it's isn't it still to this day that like it's only Wilt and Kobe that are MVPs that have passed away. Uh, or am I missing somebody else recently? Yeah, I'd have to think about. Um, I'd have to think about that. Um, because obviously Mike and you know there were those before the MVP. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you might be right. Um, it, that. That might still be the case, which is um, cool as hell. So I mean, that that at least yeah. lets us know that, despite you know Hal Greer and a few other guys yeah, that, that have, Guzzi and Pet are still alive. Russell's still alive. Yep. Um, you know, Oscar Robertson's still alive, and Will's you know Reed and Wes. Un- oh, Wes until passed away. Oh, that's, that's right. right. Yeah, right, yeah. right, right, right. Yeah. So he, yeah. he, he's 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 out as well. So yeah. yeah. So I I think ultimately though it it wouldn't be like because sometimes it's kind of depressing if you have these guys and there's like 15 dudes that aren't there or whatever. But I think you know in, if they do do something during All Star Weekend. Uh, a, a, a very, very large majority of the men will still be there, which is yeah. is really cool. Yeah, so. that would be that would be awesome. Yeah. All right. So yeah, I, I mean, I don't see anybody. You know, there's a handful of other guys that I think you could talk about here. You know, um, you know, like like Manu Ginobili. I mean, he really, you know, and we talked about him obviously a lot for the for the fifty. Um, and, and I think it's just like if you look at the numbers, they're they're really great. I mean, you know, like. He has the exact same number of NBA win shares as Julius Irving, which is just kind of like, you know, wild to think about <laughs> yeah. some caveats there, but you know, and um, you know, six man of the year, but only like two, two time all-star, you know, not really the all NBA appearances. I mean, he was a great, maybe he's a great player and he was a particularly great per minute player, but yeah, he didn't play heavy minutes, which I think was, you know, helpful to his team, but not necessarily helpful to, um, you know, his argument for this list. So, you know, um, you're probably not there. You know, I know Kyrie Irving was somebody who was talked about a lot in terms of, uh, you know, a guy in Mary's conclusion, but I, and I, I see the case, but I don't think he's necessarily, uh, you know, a, a, you know, a slam dunk or anything. I mean, he versus little, it's kind of interesting discussion because they you know, roughly parallel careers um, and obviously similar players. Yeah. Um, no, definitely. Yeah. I, I'm with you on that. Yeah. And you, I mean, like I, you could talk me into him over somebody like Maravich or, Monroe or, or Tiny Archibald, maybe, you know, the, the, obviously, you know, those guys, you know, similar types of players from different eras, but, you know, again, not really a, not really a slam dunk there. Um, you know, anyone else that really stands out to you? Not really. I mean, I think I've seen a lot of people make the, uh, the, the case for T-Mac and t max thing is like, his peak is like amazing. You know, right. hoopsanalyst.com did, did a really good piece on it. You know, looking at all time, small forwards and their, their, their top, top peaks, or there's, you know, three year peaks or whatever he was T-Mac 2000, to 2003, uh, Larry Bird, 84 to 87, like that sort of style uh, 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 of thing. And like among those players, you know, Team X three-year peak is the second best in PR behind only Kevin Durant. Uh, you know, top half of win shares per 48 just behind Bird, KD, Dr. J, and Kawhi. Uh, better box plus minus uh, than everybody except for Bird, KD, and Kawhi. And a better uh, available replacement player than everybody but Bird and KD. And and the accolades aren't, aren't bad for McGrady either. Seven-time All-Star, two-time scoring champ, uh, two-time All-NBA first team, three-time All-NBA second team. Uh, two-time All-NBA third team, two-time top five in MVP as well, uh, six-time top ten in MVP too, which kind of surprised me. The the problem with McGrady, and it's always the problem with McGrady, is that it was a very a, a slow start, obviously, as he was still very, very young. And in Toronto, he was kind of, you know, uh, a backup or kind of the second fiddle to Vince Carter. Then he has the Orlando years, and those years were fantastic. And then, you know, a few good years in Houston, and then it, it, it's it's a much slower end than people remember. I mean, T-Mac right. hung around for a long amount of time sure. just kind of being a dude. And, and right. it's similar to the Dwight Howard thing. If he retires after, like, 2007, maybe he's in there. You know what I mean? Maybe, then you're like, oh, shit, like, this, what a you know all-time great career. Efficiency numbers would be incredible, all that sort of stuff. The problem is the small window of peak play. It was just very small. The injuries caught up, all that sort of stuff. And, and also, all, you know, also in, in this you know, deserves inclusion as well. There was not a lot of team success related to that peak. You know, he that, was, he was yeah. really, really good and he scored a lot and he did a lot, but the team, you know, they make the play. They never got out of the first round. They never had prolonged playoff runs. He never had that opportunity to really, you know, show himself in, in the playoffs. And that's not all his fault. Obviously it's obviously, you know, playing on, on, on not great teams, but the fact that it, it kind of hung with them through the rest of his career, they never seemed to get over that hump that he was never as successful as a lot of his peers, I think has to play a little bit of a part in this. 
Right. Yeah. And I would agree with that. And, and yeah, you could look at it in a similar way of like Bill Walton and obviously Bill Walton's on the, on the list, but yeah. if, if Bill Walton, if you look at like his, you know, three year peak or so, it, he's among the best big men of all time, you know, up there with some of the top, you know, peaks of, you know, Russell and Kareem and all those guys in terms of, you know, you know full impact, obviously he didn't score as much as, as Kareem did, but you know, in terms of just full impact, he's up there and you can tell, yeah, um, Leonard is, or excuse me, um, you know, McGrady is up there with, you know, guys like Bird and, and KD and Doc and Kawhi, you know, the, those that's all kind of the club of guys who, you know, their three or peaks or so are just, you know, uh, among the best for any small forward of all time. But yeah, it, it, if, if he had had, you know, a championship or even a couple deep playoff runs, then I think he has a stronger case or, you know, he wins one MVP maybe, which he definitely could have won an MVP. Sure. Oh, you yeah. know, in 02 or so. I mean, he was, he was up there certainly, but, um, and maybe should have, you know, one of those years, but, um, yeah, I, I think he falls just short because of that, but he, yeah, it's a stronger case than I think I realized in when we were doing the NBA 50. Yeah, you know? I, I um, agree. I, I yeah. think I probably, I, I don't remember what I said at the time, but I probably kind of threw him aside quicker than I thought. Yeah. And then as I'm kind of right. looking at this and looking at, you know, that the hoops analyst.com thing that I mentioned as well. And, and just looking right. at in totality, I mean, those accolades were way more than I thought. I'm like, Oh man, like he was, sure. he was a big deal for, yeah. you know, five, six, seven years there and, right. and definitely deserves right. it. Uh, as far as other guys, I mean, I've heard, you know, Jimmy Butler, Paul George, Nicole Jokic as, as names brought up. Um, Butler, it's, it's hard. He's got efficiency numbers that definitely give him a case, but, but he has not really had a, you know, enough overall numbers. Uh, I don't think he's accumulated enough accolades really to have a tangible case. So he's, he's pretty out as well. Uh, yeah. Paul George, definitely on that trajectory, a lot of accolades, but, uh, uh, he, he'd be tough to really make a case for, uh, Nicole Jokic. I mean, way, way, way too early uh, for him right now, I would say, but yeah. I mean, he's definitely on that trajectory. Like if, you know, in, in five years, he might be there and, 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 oh. I think he'd definitely be there in five years. I mean, well, he already has an MVP, which obviously helps. Yes, yeah, for sure. Um, for sure. Box score plus minus of eight, which is uh, the best among centers. Of course, we're talking only post nineteen seventy four when that stat exists. Third all time between Jordan and LeBron, and he has thirteen thousand six hundred and ten career minutes um, as of this recording, which is actually more than Bill Walton, only by four hundred. But it is more that's than unbelievable. Bill Walton, so. Like right. again, like yeah. you, you know, we say this thing that you there's so. no way. That you would ever, if I said, "Hey, who has more career minutes, Nicole Jokic or Bill Walton?" There's, I, I, I think most people would probably say Bill Walton, but uh, no, you'd be wrong. Right. You're, yeah. not, you're dumb person. Right, you are <laughs> it's dumb. Nicole yeah. Jokic, you idiot. Right, you <laughs> idiot. How, how could you have not known that? Um, when I just looked at the other day and was surprised. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, so I, I, I think there's a there's a case, but yeah, I mean, in five years, uh, you know, of course, barring you know career injury pretty much tomorrow i think he's got a, a strong case to um be on there and you know eventually be a no doubter so. right and and by the way if you're one of those people making a clay thompson argument i love clay thompson clay thompson's a great shooter all yeah. time great shooter get out of here <laughs> it's not even close like he's not he's right. not in the, like they're doing the, like they're giving him number 77 like he was the last cut clay thompson like right. they're saying get out of here i mean five-time all-star three nba titles one top 10 mvp finish uh he ranks 80th in points per game 20th in three pointers that's about it so. Does he have any All NBA? No, no All NBA appearances. Not right? that I remember. Let me double check to wow. make sure that I am correct because uh, I let, 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 yeah. you know. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's okay. see. Let's make sure All League. Uh, he is a oh. two-time All in All NBA third team. Okay, so one-time All obviously. Defensive Team. So, so yeah, he's got okay. a little bit more, but right. Yeah, it's not a lot. And the, the MVP awards share, he got like .0001. <laughs> <Right. laughs> so he was really like counts. one yeah. tenth place vote, which, you know, whatever that's that, that's worth. But uh, yeah. And, and I would say Draymond's a bit similar where, um, you know, he has a defensive player of the year. He's got six appearances on all defensive team, two all NBAs, but probably not really enough to merit. But uh, I mean, I can see people making the case for Draymond and, and Clay because, you know, somebody like uh, Robert Parrish is there or somebody like, um, you know, James Worthy is there. It's like, okay, well, yeah, the big, you know, two or three guys from the, um, you know, from the Lakers and Celtics and even, you know, Rodman, you know, especially you know, the Draymond Green, Robin Parallels, we talked about that before, but I, I, I can see where people were coming from with it, but I, I, I would have to say that they probably are not, 
uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't necessarily throw either guy on um, this list, but I, no, I, I, and, I can see where the discussion comes from. Yeah, and, and one thing that's pretty interesting as well is, you know, the NBA, you know, our basketball reference, I should say, has like their Hall of Fame probability thing. And like most guys that you look at that are good are like pretty high probability because it's the Basketball Hall of Fame and they kind of estimate right. it based off, you know, leading the league and these accolades or whatever. But yeah, most players that you look at are, are, are pretty much up there. And I don't know where, where this ranks among people that are on the NBA 75. It might be a pretty interesting discussion. Maybe I'll do that, uh, run those numbers and, 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 and post it on Twitter. Twitter or something like that right, yeah. uh, for people that know, but, but Clay Thompson, his hall of fame probability right now on, on basketball reference is 51.3%. Now I think he probably will be a hall of famer. Right. I think that's pretty easy, but what that tells you is, you know, that just, just by the the blind numbers that, that algorithm is just kind of like, yeah, I mean, he's, 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 you know, probably going to get in, but like, not like a slam dunk. Whereas like, yeah, some of these guys on this list, I mean, like a Damian Lillard, you know, just real quickly, let me fire up his number. I sure. think I looked at it not that long ago, and, and Damian Lillard's like a, you know, a no-doubter, like an absolute, you know, sure. no-brainer for, for, you know, basketball references, Hall of Fame probability. Let's see, uh, 90.6 for, for right. Damian Lillard. So it's just like, I think people think that Clay probably accomplished more in his career than he did just because, you know, but, I mean, he's great. Like, again, I feel bad. Like, yeah. I, mean, I don't want to slag right. on Clay yeah. Thompson. Right. I just don't think, I think there's so many more egregious guys that we can talk about before we, we, we start talking about Clay Thompson. Yeah, I, I, I with you on that. So all right. Well, uh that was some some fun discussion there. I'm I'm uh you know, we we've started on the uh the whole NBA seventy five thing and but it is uh yeah, it's it's fun to talk about. It's fun to uh dive into some players. I think we may have a, a few other uh, follow ups to take some angles on uh on this list. So uh, we'll see what, uh, what comes of that. But, uh, but thanks Rich as always for the fun discussion. Yeah, for sure. So we, uh, we're we kicking guys off next time or what are we doing here? So. Oh yeah. We're going to, we're going to, cause I'm ready. Some guys. Yeah. Jerry Lucas, you gotta go. Pal. I'm so yeah. Like... yeah. <laughs> Tiny yeah, Archibald. <laughs> yeah. Walk your hey, ass Wiggins. out of here. You're done. Sorry. Yeah. Hey, Dave uh, Cowens. Cool. Yep. Thanks for coming, Forget pal. You're it. out. So. Yeah. Right. Dave yeah. DeBusher. Well, the garden was eaten. Yeah. We'll go back. Cause you're, that's... yeah. Uh, have a beer, enjoy the teabagging because uh, <laughs> right. <not> be- <laughs> yeah, I want Dwight Howard to teabag. I want him to come out and teabag Dave DeBusher right back to the fucking Madison Square. Get out of here, you right, you right, bum. You no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I don't uh, know what we're gonna do next, no. but uh, uh, we'll see. But no, there's always very fun discussions here. But uh, yeah, this yeah. is you know for all the, you know all the all the joking aside about the NBA 75, it does you know at the end of the day, it's just a really really cool way for people to talk about NBA history and talk about great players. So it, it's been fun to, you know, that then, you know, the, the, the big topic around, you know, NBA discussions are, you know, classic players of all time and that sort of stuff. That's cool. I mean, that obviously yeah. we enjoy basketball history. So of course uh, we would like this discussion, but yeah, at the end of the day, it's like, and we said this during the over and back 50 and NBA 50, it's like not that big of a deal. It's not like a make or break uh, for any of right. these guys, but uh, yeah. Um, Except uh, Marky, uh, Marcus Johnson, did you see his uh, his tweet that, that he did? Funny. Yes, that was yeah, incredible. That was so great. obviously Marcus yes. Johnson, if you did not see the tweet, I uh, was not on the NBA seventy five, and I don't think he really expected to be. Uh, but he he used his uh, his scene from White Men Can't Jump as his tweet, which you know he says like, <laughs> "I'm gonna go back to my car and I'm gonna get my gun and I'm gonna blow y'all heads off." Or whatever. <laughs> it's just awesome. So it's like, yeah. and he says like, "Oh, my reaction to not being on the NBA seventy five list is is yeah. awesome." But uh, Marcus good. Johnson also has an awesome Twitter account too, because yeah. every year I don't, do you, you you follow Marcus Johnson as well, right? Yeah, 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 of course, yeah. Um, every year on his birthday, he just dunks just to prove that he still can. Which rules. Great. <laughs> and yeah. I'm going to start doing that as well. Uh, All right. So hopefully for my next birthday, I could dunk for the first time ever. And then I'll, All right. And then from there on forward, I'm going to dunk every year. So All right. uh, just need hey. to get that first one done. And then, then yeah. I'll... Hey, if you got to get a trampoline, do it for, for, for you know. <laughs> Eight for, foot hoops. I'll okay. just shoot it low. You know, yeah, you won't even you know. Go. They're like, whoa. Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> wow. Whoa. Wow. Wow. You're, you're very tall. I didn't yeah. know yeah. you were so tall. Yeah. But nice. uh, anyway, awesome stuff there. But uh, yeah, right. enjoy cool. this. So enjoy this discussion. And we'll, we'll, we'll do it some more for sure. All right. Sounds fun. Well, uh, everyone, hope you, Lee, you are enjoying the show. You can find us at the step back at fansided.com where there is amazing NBA content, both historical and of uh, the new season of uh, exciting things that are going on. And uh, you can uh, find us um, wherever you listen to your podcast. Please leave us a rating and review. If we're not on any of the a podcast platform you would like us to be on, let us know. We will try to get on there. You can find us on social media, both Facebook and Twitter, at Over and Back uh, NBA. If you really want us on to be on another social media, we're, well, I'm an old person and Rich is getting old, so we're afraid of other social media platforms. <laughs> but if you really want us to be on there, we'll, I've, uh, I've we'll had to recently it, so. uh, do uh, a little bit of a of, of TikToking, uh, Ooh, Jason, for my work. Wow. 
oh. I guess, and and I don't like it. So don't make us yeah. go on TikTok because I don't All want right. to. So no, no TikTok. But if for we us. must TikTok, then then yeah. we will uh we'll dance and and rip things off, like urinals off of bathroom walls or whatever. The, oh, whatever wow. the challenge is at the time, okay. we will uh, we'll right. definitely not do it. <laughs> but, All right. Uh, yeah. we'll, uh, with that, uh, have a uh, excellent evening, and we'll talk to you soon.